This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SolidWorks, make sure you go to the 3D Experience student community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SolidWorks.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And welcome back to number 3544 uh, coming in. We are here on week two and we can't wait to see more about their progress here on week five in the Open Alliance show, we're going to be talking about uh, their CAD and their prototype progress, jump in more uh, into their uh, programming, and then talk about some fabrication and assembly. So we have Charles and Fred back uh, once again. Hey, guys, if you don't mind, just remind us uh, who you are and then uh, what you do on the team, and we'll jump right into uh, what you've been working on. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, my name is Charles, uh, and I'm the programmer lead. And then uh, my name is Fred, uh, Fred, and I'm the mechanical lead. Well, let's hop in. We're going to talk about your uh, your CAD first, so we'll bring that up on screen. Tell us more about uh, your progress so far, and uh, then we'll keep jumping uh, through. Uh, what else have you been working on? Yes, of course. So uh, since last time, we've done uh, actually a bunch of progress on our CAD. So we spent we we spend a lot of time uh, like refining our mechanisms and just polishing everything. Uh, so as you can see, we've really like we've designed some custom plates for our um, turret, uh, and we've really like made our uh, so we i don't know how to say it but uh we really upgraded the way we connect our uh, subsystems together sure yeah uh, we've also taken the time to make sure that everything is super solid and has a bunch of uh, of connection points mm -hmm. and there's no like uh, flaws or like uh, prob uh, default in our cab yeah. so um, so we had some finally but uh it went pretty well yeah so but generally that made our construction uh very uh, much uh, much smoother so we didn't have as much trouble uh fitting yeah. pieces together uh, etc like compared to last year yes uh so we we're gonna show our uh, some of our prototypes that we did since uh, last time so first we've got uh this uh, it's uh it's inspired by the everybot uh, robot yes so as fred said it's inspired by the everybot bot so basically what we have is two rollers in an angle so it's different than the than the everbot roller in a way that since our arm is going to be angled it's going to be flat like that so it's going to be easier to pick up the cones yeah. and the cubes we've got we've done a lot of prototyping so uh we, this is our first uh, prototype that we did since last time so it basically allows us to uh so what we re really realize from this is that uh, you really need to have the front the two front um, rollers really really close to each other and at an angle so since we have an arm, it's going to be angled downwards. Mm -hmm. So that allows it to be flat uh, relative to the, 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 the ground. Yeah. So that makes intaking cones uh, much easier. Uh, as well, we've realized that the, the back roller for um, cubes uh, really needs to be at an angle also. So that makes picking up everything much, much easier. Uh, yes, so that's it. Also, I don't know if uh, you've heard, but uh, this is inspired by the Everbot prototype. Mm -hmm. um, so this was our second prototype that we uh, did. Yeah. Uh, and so um, sadly, we can't really show you. It. We can't really show it to you right now uh, because uh, it's been disassembled. But this is what it looked like. We really focused on making it adjustable, so yeah. we could really uh, try a bunch of different distances. Uh, for so the rollers, yeah. the the, the pre pretty much the only difference between uh, this one and the other one is that this one uh, you it's can it's actually it's like yeah it's a just basis yeah, yeah. yeah just uh, also uh, we want to say that we have successfully failed <laughs> uh, because um, we realized that our arm was very very easy uh, to adjust to be able to uh, to um, uh, get to, to the, 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 the third, third uh, the third level sure. yeah. the top level for the cubes. And uh, so we're, we're going to try find, uh, instead to, um, to get up top. But if we can't, it's, it's, all, it's fine because, because uh, it's very easy to adjust. So we, we can yeah. just cut the two by two tube. Yeah. So and, uh, it, we, we see that we have a success, 
successfully failed because uh, we were planning to actually go only to the second uh, yeah. stage and we can actually go to the third one. Yeah, so we're still going to focus on the second, the middle uh, nodes, but uh, we still have that going for us. And uh, are you guys now, still uh, looking at using a turret on your robot too? I thought I saw that. Uh, yes, of course, we're using a, a turret. So I haven't seen m many teams do that. But uh, we've decided to do it because we really liked programming the turret last year. And it's an interesting challenge for us. And, and we, yeah, we also uh, uh, like uh, we, we, did, we couldn't use a sword this year. So uh, we're like kind of using it to comp compensate for it because yes. uh, like to uh, be able to uh, pick up. Uh, yeah. So easier. since we have a little more experience making turrets than uh, than Swerve, we've decided to kind of compensate. Uh, not having sword by having a turret. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the turret is actually a really interesting uh, thing and that um, you might actually find some really interesting advantages to it over Swerve, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, so many teams out there that are doing, you know, a single jointed or double jointed arm or elevator yeah. with a Swerve that, you know, the, the movement or the reach across that you might be able to accomplish by like, you know, scoring 90 degrees from your drivetrain, giving yourself that extra reach, you know, coming in at different angles where like you don't have to be perfectly squared up with the peg right in front of you yeah. to score. I think there's actually something there. Um, I was, I, I, I know that uh, there are a lot of teams are like, oh, Swerve's the new meta, but I think that there are still uh, pl plenty of creative decisions and things you can do around Swerve's, around uh, yeah, turrets. So and I'm really excited have, to see you go down this road and what you can do with it. Yeah, we also kind of want it to be different. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. instead of just doing Swerve, we decided to do something a little different. Uh, so we can move on to programming. Sure. If, uh, if, uh, yes. So uh, what we've been doing this year is that we switched to uh, command-based programming. So that allows us to have much more uh, modular prog uh, programming. So if you didn't know, you can assemble blocks of like commands to do multiple things. And it's kind of like blocks that you can assemble. So what that allows us to do is uh, really um, like make complex movements without turret because programming a turret is very difficult. So what we've, des what, uh, we've decided to do is pre-program pre a bunch of positions. Then we can easily make sequences of those yeah. positions. Uh, so to like, make program yeah, yeah to make uh, the the movement a bit more fluid and easier to program yes. yeah yeah I'm driving also because you can just like press on a button and the the turret is gonna about the arm is gonna go like to the, the right position yes uh so uh yes so what what we've also done is uh, we started programming uh, in advanced so this was all written before the robot was uh was um was built yeah. so that gives us a, a big head start on the other teams and other other stuff uh so i think it just gives easy. your programmer an opportunity to do stuff anyway so many teams kind of just yeah. wait till later so yeah. i think that's really cool because, to hear. for example i i couldn't really do much work uh while, while waiting for the for the the robot to be built so i've really decided to just write everything uh, right now just yeah. to make everything easier. So, uh, do you want to show the turret? Uh, yes. Well, we've we've been having actually some issues with the turret, but uh, what we can show you right now is uh, we've designed the little command to uh, automatically um, calibrate the turret. So, get a zero position, and it actually uses a uh, magnetic uh, switch. For us, what's ahead for programming is really uh, polishing everything, making some adjustments for uh, autom for. Um, autonomous and uh, other things because we, we we really haven't started a lot on the autonomous right now yeah so uh we really want to focus on that uh next because that allows us to do a lot of points yes <laughs> um so now passing to a uh, fabrication and assembly uh we want to thank uh, our friends at uh, Northern Knights uh, 296 because they uh helped us by sensing our belly uh, pans uh, or belly pan yeah singular. And uh, both uh, like triangle uh, gussets. Yes. So uh, we really want to thank them for uh, lending us their four by four CNC. So that allows us, as you can see, to uh, machine some very big parts. Uh, for example, our belly pan. Uh, we've settled this year for a, a, a full belly pan. 
because that adds a lot of weight to the back, to the bottom of the robot. So we actually inspired ourselves from uh, of uh, Teslas, uh, which have a lot of weight on the bottom. So that uh, really uh, makes the center of gravity lower. Uh, so that's why we settled with uh, with the uh, um, uh, full belly pan. Uh, but to do a to to have a bit of a design, we decided to um, cut uh, vinyl. And we're gonna stick on it and for for full effect. Yeah. So uh, this year, this year we decided to use uh, Max tubes uh, to make all uh, of our, uh, of our well, our, all of our extrusions are Max tubes. Yes. So um, we have some struggle uh, drilling uh, bearing holes because we somehow well, we don't really have a, a good um, well uh, drill press. Drill press. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of like uh, shifted the holes to the side. Yeah. We have we've been having yeah. some trouble with that, but. Thankfully, we, we, we found a way to fix it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically what we did is we uh, kind of like used a, a stem drill and uh, it allowed us to really uh, make the holes bigger progressively. So that helped a lot. But it's yeah. still not perfectly straight, but it's good enough. So let me ask you guys. Uh-huh. So you, you compete at uh, Festival de Robotique in week five. Yeah. So you have quite a few weeks to go still. So, uh, you know, if you think of a few years ago when you had stop build, you're like, okay, the robot's got to be done by then. So, like, I, I guess where do you want to be in, like, a couple weeks? I mean, obviously, when you get to week five, you want a fully completed running robot and stuff. But, like, does that timeline slow down a little bit now since you're not competing till week five, maybe versus, uh, you know, previous years when you look at students that were on the team prior to you? Uh, well, we kind of want to be uh, a lot. I mean, it's difficult to say because, um, well, we, yeah, well, we we want to finish in a, a few weeks to be able to have like time to practice. And, sure. Uh, uh, it's sure that we have a, a lot more time, a uh, lot more time than uh, in the past because we don't have to buy the robot anymore. So. Yeah, that's so nice. that's a lot. That allows us to uh, have a, a lot more time, and uh, we by then we really want to focus on making it making uh, the the programming and the robot as driver friendly as possible, uh, and we really want to spend a lot of time on the testing it to make sure it doesn't break at all before competition because uh, there's not a lot of time left, and we really don't want to have to make spare parts and stuff and upgrades. Uh, and so we really want to test it as much as possible yeah. before competition. So, well, uh, that's- yeah, well, 3544, really appreciate you uh, showcasing the uh, progress of it. Uh, uh, the uh, turret video as well, too, uh, really impressive that we're going to see. So can't wait to uh, check that out more and uh, and see where your progress is going to lead uh, if you're a robot as well, too. So thanks a lot. And uh, we won't have you back on until, uh, you know, until you do compete. So good luck at your week five event. But we can't wait to keep following your progress. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you go to the 3D Experience Student Community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.